Our very last section here deals with something called percent yield. And when you're calculating percent yield, you're really comparing the theoretical yield and the actual yield. So the theoretical yield is what we've been doing before when we did these other calculations. So we were trying to figure out how much product are we going to make. Um, it's That's based on the calculations. That's based on stoichiometry. That's in theory, if everything went perfectly, how much product would you make? That's the theoretical yield. It's always going to be a lot more than what you actually get when you run the reaction. The actual yield is what you actually make. So the actual yield is always less than the theoretical yield. The theoretical yield is going to be the maximum amount of product that you make. So your percent yield, the way you calculate that is your you know, percent yield uh, is the actual over is the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield times 100. And that's your percent yield. So the actual yield again is always going to be smaller than the theoretical yield. So it's a small number over the big number times a thousand. You'll calculate your percent yield um, in organic chemistry when you start you know, making products and you're going to weigh them out. You're going to do the reaction, try to figure out what your theoretical yield was, and then you actually do the reaction. <laughs> you find the actual yield, uh, and then actual over theoretical times 100 will give you your percent yield. So let's look at another problem using stoichiometry, um, and then we'll calculate the percent yield. That's going to be part B. So here you have this reaction. You have your iron 3 oxide, um, and you have 150 grams of that, and they tell you that's your limiting reactant. So um, we don't have to figure out what it is. They already gave it to you, and now they want to know what's the theoretical yield of iron. So basically this is a gram to gram conversion, similar to what we just did before where you're going to take grams of your iron 3 oxide and you're going to try to figure out how many grams of iron iron would I get. Now, uh, what we did before with the limiting reactant problems, we had to take you know this reactant, figure out how many products, take this reactant, if we used up how many products, how much products would we make. This time they give us the limiting reactant so we don't have to worry about that. But it's still a uh, you know a molar mass sandwich. We're going to take, um, start off with 150 grams of P2O3. And we're going to go grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. How do you go from grams to moles? That's a molar mass. Mol, um, moles to moles using the chemical equation. And then uh, moles to grams using molar mass. So I have grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. And I'm starting here with the Fe203, grams of Fe203, so I need to find that molar mass. And then I have grams of Fe203, and I'm trying to get to just iron. And then I have moles of iron to grams of iron. So over here is the molar mass of iron. Over here is the molar mass of the iron 2 oxide, which you should be able to calculate by now. Right, so let's find these molar masses. So pause the video right now and calculate your molar masses. So two times iron um, plus three times oxygen. And when you work all that out, you should get about 100. That's 159.7 grams per mole. That's the molar mass. Um, molar mass of just iron is... 55.85 grams per mole. All right, so I have 159.7 grams per one mole. And now the moles to moles conversion comes from the chemical equation. I have one here, I have two here. So I have one of the iron three oxide, I have two of the irons. And then my molar mass over here is just, you know, how many grams do I have per mole um, of iron? 55.85 grams of iron per one mole. So in your calculator, you're going to have 150 times 1 times 2 times 55.85 over 159.7 times 1 times 1. And when you work all that out, you get 105 grams of iron. 
So pause, you know, take a minute and um, make sure you work through that. Now, what we just calculated is called the theoretical yield. So again, we did that before. We just didn't call it theoretical yield. Um, whenever you're, you're finding the, the products here using the, the chemical, the, using the equation in stoichiometry, that's in theory, this is how much you should get. So now suppose in part B, you actually do the reaction and your actual yield is only 87.9 grams. What is the percent yield? So the percent yield is going to be the actual, right, actual over theory, over theoretical times 100. Your actual was 87.9. Your theoretical was 105 times 100 and you get 83.7%. So that's your uh, percent yield. And that's the end of this chapter.